And this is the second chapter where she's storming out of a restaurant after her boy toy, Kyle, tries to stick her with a check, and it's her birthday. Oh! <laughs> if Sydney hadn't been so pissed, she might have become aroused when Kyle gra grabbed her arm and pinned her against the wall at the top of the staircase. Sydney, what's wrong with you, he said, as if he, had, if, if he was in any position to question anything. You can't just leave. Oh, yeah? Watch me. We haven't paid the bill, he said, trying to keep her from squirming away. She looked up at him angrily to try to avoid direct eye contact. Those misty green eyes could be her undoing. You haven't paid the bill. Kyle released her arm and rested his hand against the, against the wall. Look. Hearing that one word come out of his disturbingly sexy mouth and that humoring tone made her that much angrier. She hated when men who were clearly in the wrong tried to turn things around and make it seem like it was the wrong thing. She knew, what, she knew what he was going to say. She was overreacting, being too emotional. She should calm down. Well, maybe she didn't want to fucking calm down. She was mad as hell and she had every right to be. Since she landed the job at Cachet, every guy she dated made less money than she did. And for some reason, she always, for the same reason she always had a dollar and a kind word for a homeless woman, she thought drunk, druggy, loser, when she passed a homeless man, she hadn't respected a one of them. Women, women had to work harder for less money, all while trudging around like shirkers loaded down with guilt and self-loathing. Every time a guy pretended not to see the check a waiter had presumptuously set before him, she'd think, if I can make it, why the fuck can't you? But she didn't have to respect someone to screw him. In her experience, the check was way hotter when you didn't. Kyle, Kyle was the male version of the blonde, but the boy was a sexual savant. She'd give him that. It was amazing what he could do with just one finger. He was the first man ever to make her come from intercourse, which being an all-around do-it-yourself girl unnerved her at first. It still did, though not so much that she didn't give him the opportunity three or more times a week. <laughs> she usually lost interest in men around the eight-week mark, but due to his sexual prowess, she kept Kyle around for six whole months. He wouldn't make it to seven. In the last few weeks, his liberal use of let's and us and we, in addition to his persistent pleas that she goes see spam a lot with his opie doke to be her parents came to visit, was speeding up the demise of what had been a perfectly lovely and mutual beneficial meaningless relationship. Had she asked him to go anywhere tonight? Of course not. She preferred, preferred to order in. That way she had distractions, the phone, TV, Twitter, to stay above boredom. <laughs> Going out to dinner meant they had to talk for two hours straight. But, Ky but Kyle had insisted, just as he'd, he'd insisted on ordering a celebratory bottle of champagne, even though she told him she didn't like champagne. She never drank it, not even on New Year's. I wanted to do something special for you, he said, then treat me to a Manny Petty, stupid. <laughs> In the six months they'd been together, Kyle, a struggling actor who on occasion worked as a server for glorious food, had not paid for a thing. Not a cab ride, not a movie, not a goddamn frappuccino. At first it was, oh, I don't have any cash on me. Then, I lost my credit card and I'm waiting for the replacement, or for the last four months, I'm just waiting for the residual check on that commercial I did. By the time she realized he was the brokest of all her struggling artist flings, she was hooked on the sex. And with his soulful green eyes, soft pink lips, and nearly hairless body, he was too delicious to resist. Just thinking about the V that formed on his lower abdomen made her forget the fact that his ends were not long, as Jeffrey James Elliott, her go-to gay, might say in a ghetto moment. Jeffrey considered it a sacrilege that Sydney paid for everything, but she was a modern woman with her own ends, and she secretly enjoyed being in the power position. She always got to pick the movies and whether they ordered Mexican or Chinese, and whenever she, she called asking him to say, make a midnight trek from the deep recesses of Brooklyn where he lived in a row house with his three roommates to service her in her cozy West Village apartment and pick up a pint of haagen on the way, he always came, as did she. <laughs> All things considered, it wasn't such a bad deal. Tonight, deal breaker. The one, the one time she said, looking him dead in the eyes, to prove to herself that she could, she wasn't going to let him sweet talk her, and she wasn't going to be a slave to her own desires. She didn't need his magic fingers. She had the Hitachi magic wand. Love that. The one time you say you're going to take me out, and you pull this shit. A couple quick squeeze past them to get down the stairs, and Kyle pulls her through the doorway into the bar area. Okay, I know you're mad, he said, but I'll get it next time, I promise. Sydney looked, shook her head and sighed, oh, Kyle, didn't he get it? She had been a willing co-conspirator in their postmodern arrangement, but there was always a bubbling <coughs> undercurrent of latent resentment just below the surface, on his heart too, she sensed. 
Tonight's eruption had brought it gushing forth like hot molten lava, and there was no way to reverse the flow. It was the natural order of things. Taking it a step toward him, she put her hands on his flushed cheeks, gave him a long, soft kiss on the mouth, and whispered, Sweetie, there isn't going to be next time. <laughs> 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 